Good afternoon and good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to our encore presentation of CanvasCon from USF from earlier this week. With us, we have Nicolina, and she will be doing her encore presentation for you today. So I'll just go ahead and hand it over to her. Welcome. All right, good afternoon. Um, my name is Nicolina Wilson, as she said. I am excited to bring you my CanvasCon encore presentation from the University of South Florida, which happened on Monday. Um, I hope you guys have had a great week and you are looking forward to the weekend. Um, and that thank you for joining us on this Friday afternoon. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So welcome to this encore session. I'm excited to show you a little bit about what we have done in our school district um, with kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, but this whole concept of irresistible curriculum and how to create really engaging irresistible curriculum for students can be done at any grade level um, with any learner, uh, both kindergartners and adults. So the concepts that we'll be talking about really can apply to many different audiences, um, but the content I'm gonna be using for my examples is our kindergarten through fifth grade uh, computer science plan for our district. I'm Nicolina Wilson, as she said, and this is my uh, Twitter hashtag. Uh, so you're welcome to tweet me at me. Um, see, because that was my maiden name, um, but it is now my middle name, so it works. Um, I'm an innovation specialist in Seminole County uh, for Seminole County Public Schools for the ePathways Department. Um, my job is a little bit of everything, and I get to uh, have a little flavor of everything from blended learning to building online courses to online uh, to um, anything new and innovative that the school district is pursuing. So on any given day, my job could be a little different. Um, so I'm excited to bring my perspective from ePathways, uh, helping students get a, an educational pathway that's really going to prepare them for their future, whatever that might be. So I'm excited to bring uh, my perspective to you today. So leading right into our, our presentation, um, have you ever worked with a blank canvas and, and since we're talking about Canvas. I'm not only talking about Canvas, the program. I'm talking about a Canvas in general. It can be a little intimidating in order to begin with this blank Canvas, right? And that could be if you're a writer, it could be that blank piece of notebook paper, or it could be um, the email that you're um, unsure of and unsure of how to begin, and it could be that blinking cursor that <laughs> you see on your Word document or your email. Um, or it could look like this, right, which is what we see in Canvas, our, our real text editor um, over here, blank with nothing in it. And, and it's, you know, sometimes you don't really know where to go with this. Sometimes you look at either that blank cursor and you're like, where do I begin? What do I start with? How do I really make this into what I want it to be? So I'm going to hopefully help you get over that little bit of whether it be creator's block or writer's block um, and into... Um, something more of what you want it to look like. So when you see that blank screen, what is it that you really want? Do you want it to look like this, which is um, one of our courses for our middle schoolers, or if you scroll down, um, there's this course trailer. And I said this the other day, and I guess some people liked it on, on Twitter and whatnot, but I think every course needs a course trailer. Um, be creative with it, because if every movie gets a trailer, and there's, there's trailers for all sorts of different things like apps and YouTube channels and everything, why doesn't your course that you build in Canvas deserve a trailer? Um, engage your students, your community, and get those kids or get those adults to go home and say, look what I am learning. I'm so excited to get into the rest of the course because I've got this little snapshot that engaged me. Um, maybe you want your professional development to look like this, where you have a theme, um, in this case, a refreshing theme on project-based learning, where we've kind of taken it to the next level. Um, maybe you are sharing some information and you want to build something more like a website inside of Canvas that you want it to look like this with clickable buttons there at the bottom. Um, maybe you want it to look like this. And maybe you want to come up with some really engaging, innovative, exciting theme and ideas for your course, for your students. Um, this one is an example that I will show a little bit of later on in the presentation um, about where our students worked through active investigations of case files in order to learn curriculum to earn a digital tool certification. So 
Maybe that's what you want your blinking screen to be like, and you haven't quite gotten it there yet because you're still at those beginning stages of having that blank canvas. Maybe you want your buttons to look like this. This. Or like this. So let's talk about how we can make that happen. I'm here to tell you that you can make it happen. Um, one of the things that is a little intimidating in that beginning part is is getting you know getting started, getting that first first thing to happen is is figuring it out. And I just don't want you to underestimate the importance of planning and storyboarding. So. When you're thinking about planning and storyboarding, I want you to think about um, UBD and beginning with the end in mind and working backwards. So what is it that that end goal that you really want to look like, whether it be sketching it out, whether it be talking it through with someone that you're collaborating with, um, just talk about what you want it to be and then take those steps to get there. So let's talk about that process. The best part of having a blank canvas to work with is that it's a blank canvas. You could make it look like whatever you want it to be. Um, and one of the most challenging parts of working with a blank canvas is that it's a blank canvas and you don't know necessarily where to begin. So like I said, that planning part is really important. Um, so the way that we're going to talk about planning and, and the example that I'm going to use right now is our Computer Science 2020 plan. It's called Computer Science 2020 because our superintendent had a vision for our district that by the year 2020, he wanted all of our students to have some exposure to computer science. That doesn't mean that we want to churn out a generation of coders. That just means that we want our students to see computer science as something that they are accustomed to, that they are used to. Um, there's a lot of resources that coding in computer science is one of the new um, literacies, that it's not only being uh, literate and being able to read, write, and do math, but also to have a basic understanding of coding and computer science. We wanted our students in Seminole County to have a step ahead um, to really get that leg up on, on the regular um, run-of-the-mill job posting and have that exposure in computer science to make them feel empowered um, so that they can be the um, the people that are in charge of the technology, that know how the technology runs, that can code, that can make apps, that can create things, not have the technology running them and telling them what to do. So that's one of the biggest um, precursors to why we started this computer science plan, um, is that research. So the, his vision is to bring computer science to all grade levels, pre-K through eight, and then have increased robust pathways for nine through 12. Um, we do this through uh, content and curriculum connections to standards and skills that they're already teaching in these grade levels. For instance, uh, we began with kindergarten coding, which I'm going to show you the timeline of how we did this um, in just a minute. But we began with kindergarten coding. And one of the things that kindergarten teachers always told us that they struggled with is teaching students directionality and left and right. So we decided that teaching students directionality and teaching students coding left and right um, were two integrated things and we infused them together and our kindergartners now have learned left and right after the first year, second year of kindergarten coding is going on right now currently. Um, and they've learned it better than any other year in the past. So our kindergarten teachers are even just excited that these students can learn left and right and directionality and cardinal directions in a much more meaningful way that happens to stick instead of this elusive concept that, that our kids were always struggling with. Um, so that's just an example of how we connect it to the curriculum and standards that we already have to teach. But like I said, coding is that new literacy, and that's one of the biggest reasons we started this Computer Science 2020 plan. We wanted to give our students that leg up, and we're really big on, on equity in our district and really having all students, no matter of their background, their ethnicity, uh, anything of their demographics, to have that same experience and something that is interesting to them and have that same accessible jobs of the future. And coding computer science is going to give those students, hopefully, um, that exposure to something that they may not have had exposure to otherwise. So we talk, we're talking about planning and storyboarding. 
in order to make this plan get off the ground, um, we came up with the um, plan with this task force. So we had a task force of 30 members, and our job was, what does this plan look like? We had to figure it out by the end of four wonderful uh, two-hour meetings that had to be really productive with some uh, homework in between each meeting, and we had to deliver this Computer Science 2020 plan. And just the plan for how this is going to look logistically and the kind of processes of learning that we were going to integrate. So we did a lot of research into what the nation was doing, the state was doing, a lot of other districts were doing, and just what's out there in coding and computer science. Um, the task force included community members, local business owners and leaders in the computer science field, a school board member, uh, students, teachers, robotic specialists, district leaders, uh, et cetera. So we had a whole lot of us that were a part of this committee from a bunch of various backgrounds um, because we really needed people with some different skill sets in order to get what we really needed out of this plan. And during this presentation, I'm going to give you some helpful tips that hopefully you can take back right away after watching this webinar or participating in this professional development. Um, and so one of those helpful tips is that both the logistics and the creativity. So we're kind of talking logistically right now. That's actually not my strong suit. That's my husband's strong suit. Um, he's the one that can take my vision that I have for whatever crazy trip I want to plan or whatever amazing creative idea that as an innovation specialist I bring to our school district um, and make it come to fruition, make it happen. Um, you really need people that are good at the logistics and the creativity in order to make that happen. So collaboration is key, um, and it's okay that you're maybe better at one of them and not the other, as long as you kind of have an understanding of what the big picture needs to be. So that's my first helpful tip. But our elementary model, um, by the end of these four task force meetings, came up with something like this. And our kindergarten structured lessons were already happening. All of this is delivered through Canvas, by the way, um, which is why it's kind of a great to do during a CanvasCon live session. So we use Canvas for all of our curriculum delivery in our district. Um, but we started with kindergarten, which is 10 um, scripted lessons that the teachers can use as is, or they can make uh, make their own lessons that are in corporation with whatever we've given them. So a lot of the teachers have used what we have and then gone above and beyond with their students because their students fell in love with our little bee bots that we use in kindergarten or things like that. And it can be really cross-curricular. We have students doing some ELA, some math, um, some science, some social studies on the same piece of technology um, and using bee bots uh, and the maths that go underneath them to um, to make the students really engaged in the curriculum, they're practicing their coding skills, building algorithms, but they're also learning whatever standards they need to learn. First and second grade look a little bit similar to that kindergarten where it's a little bit more structured. Everybody's kind of doing the same 10 lessons, a little bit more project-based when it comes to first and second. And by the end, um, by the 10th lesson or 11th lesson, they're all creating. Third grade's a little bit more self-directed. We have the students in Canvas themselves. Um, and it's not as much of a teacher resource, much more of a student resource. And fourth and fifth grade um, are looking like third grade. Fifth grade's definitely in the works, but we've got a little while till 2020 to get to that. Um, so as I said, we began a kindergarten computer science last year. We went to first this year, this current school year. Um, we are in the process of creating the curriculum for second, fourth, and fifth grade. We train all of our second, fourth, and fifth grade teachers in July, so we're putting together that curriculum, which is written by our teachers. Um, I had a great question at the end of my session on Monday, which is, do we use a specific canned curriculum? The answer is no. We have not picked a curriculum off the shelf. We have decided that um, we wanted to make it as integrated as possible into what Seminole County Schools is doing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis with our students. So we had our teachers write our curriculum. So the lessons are very similar to things that they're already doing in ELA, social studies, math, etc. cetera. Um, but they're doing these in computer science. So that means for us, they're adaptable. And year after year, as we continue to learn more about this and learn more about how students learn computer science, then we can keep this adapting. Um, and then those kindergartners that started in 15-16 school year are going to get the full-on Model A instruction by the year 2021. 
So I'm going to switch actually out of my PowerPoint and go into Canvas itself and show you a little bit about computer science. So let me do that. So here is a look at what we've done in kindergarten and how it looks in Canvas. So all of our students in kindergarten, first and second grade have this course as well as the teachers and the teachers are in here and they can go to any lesson. We also have a website, a website, um, a Canvas course built for parents built in Canvas for parents here um, where they can see and get a glimpse at what all their students are learning in each one of these lessons. I'm going to take you to any one of them. And they can get some extra home extensions to do with their students. So here's a little bit about what the teacher has done. And then here's some things that they can do to help their students um, with these concepts at home. Maybe there's a little game that they can play online or some apps. So we wanted our parents to be able to support our students. So I was talking about these BBOTs, so that's a great place to start and jump in in kindergarten coding. So we started here and in Canvas, we have what the teacher should do. Um, but the teacher can take it and run with it. They can take this course and they can uh, edit it and add some things that they're doing. Um, so here's just a look at that. And I'm going to take you through a couple pages here as if you were a teacher. Um, so they're going to read a little book about what the bots are and all the resources are linked here in Canvas. And as you can see, all of the um, videos and all the resources are embedded right there in Canvas. I'm not going to press play and make you um, watch the Bebot move across the, uh, <laughs> the mat here. Um, the beginning of kindergarten coding. And by this point, our kindergartners already, since we're in lesson four, know the word algorithm and know that it's a sequence. Um, hey, and make sure that we don't push Bebop because Bebop moves on its own, right? It's a coding uh, little robot that we want our students to code the bot to move instead of push the Bebop around. So we have to make sure that they don't do that. Um, but this is what our kindergarten coding looks like. So one of the things that I want to show you too, later, so if you can see the blue in the kindergarten and the yellow in the first grade, um, is kind of just a little gentle reminder for the kids that this is what, um, that we're doing coding, right? That we're doing computer science. And if you see this little um, mascot here called Alphabot, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about him in a minute. Um, we try to keep it very thematic and uh, students. So those younger learners, um, every time they see this bright yellow, every time they see the blue in kindergarten, every time they see this little mascot called Alphabot, um, they know that they're in computer science and they're learning about coding. So it's just those little gentle reminders that as we are, as we're building the curriculum, as we're creating things in Canvas, we want to make the students familiar with our little alphabet and our, and our. So third grade um, looks like this. Um, we decided that the third graders were going to have a more thematic uh, approach to it um, via comic books. So our little alphabet character gets gear once they complete a coding lesson every time. They can unlock hidden lessons, um, which I thought was really exciting that the students can even unlock little things. Um, and it just creates that, that buy-in from the students and gets them excited uh, to, to want to do this instead of um, something that they have to do, but really make it something that they want to do. All right, so as this is loading, um, and I did get a question too about ADA, that there are some things that we've built in, for instance, this little uh, Alphabot icon, every time he's got headphones on, um, you can get him to say whatever we have built out here on Canvas. Um, so it's helping out those learners that are more auditory and not necessarily visual. Oh. One of the things that I'm going to next is talk about is just as important as the planning and storyboarding in order to get to those really robust uh, curriculum resources is making it irresistible. The true measure of irresistible curriculum is getting the students to want to do this. Is do you have that kid that when you are presenting what you're going to do or when they see that little alphabet character, or when they see the bright yellow or the bright blue, do they go, yes? I'm really excited to do this. That's when you know you've hit the nail on the head. Um, and this is true for students and adults. If you will 
if you really want to do something, if you're really excited about it, if it's truly an irresistible thing that you can't wait to do, you're going to find a way to do it. And that's great for our kids because Canvas allows our students to learn 24-7, 365. It's up at all times. Um, if not, they're going to find an excuse. And, and you know those kids. Those kids are going to find any excuse imaginable to do something they don't want to do. Well, the key is to get irresistible curriculum to them that they want to do, that they're excited to do, that they want to be a part of. And that's what we um, pride ourselves, at least myself, as I'm building this curriculum. Is this something that I would want to do? Is this something that I want my kids to do? Um, we have had some amazing stories about when they're done with the lessons and they have to go back to doing something else that they're so disappointed. And that's when you know you've hit this irresistible curriculum mark is the students are disappointed when it's over. Um, my stepdaughter, I have her be my little guinea pig. Um, she is a sixth grader in my school district. And I like to build courses. And I do that for my job. And I bl build some blended learning courses for middle school or my elementary schoolers. And I kind of use her as a test subject. If this is something that she'll sit on and play for a little while and, and accidentally learn some computer digital skill knowledge or some computer science along the way, I've done a good job. If she will humor me and look at it for a few minutes and then she will turn herself back to whatever she was doing and go read a book. I know I've got some work to do. Um, so I do use her for that. Um, but I think that concept of accidental learning is really something to think about when you're building courses, when you're thinking about uh, kindergarten through fifth grade, when you're thinking about computer science um, or anything like that. You want the students to feel like they're playing like they are having fun, like they're collaborating, like they're getting away with doing something. But guess what? They're accidentally learning. And that's amazing to see. When you see that in action, it really is something that is heartwarming and exciting um, as a designer, as an instructional designer, a course builder, as a teacher, is getting those students so engaged that they're, you know, they're accidentally learning, but they're really doing a whole bunch of other things, and, and we get to sneak it in there. Um, someone just used a, a great analogy with me the other day. They said, um, it's kind of like when you sneak the kids in eating their vegetables. Um, <laughs> you sneak the learning in, but it's fun, and, and that's what we want learning to be is fun. Stop and think about that for a second. Uh, um, just the impact that that can have in a student's life that might not have that opportunity to learn those things otherwise. This is kind of the anti-mantra of what I do, right? I don't want our students to feel like they've gotten something that they have to do. I want them to feel like they've gotten to do something that they want to do, to play a game, to solve a mystery, to um, to earn an animal, which is the um, theme of our first grade computer science course. Not that they have to fill out this worksheet. Like I said, Canvas really has that 24-7, 365 learning that can happen to really engage our students. Um, one of the examples I'm going to show now is that one that I was just talking about that I had my daughter. So this is our curriculum that we use to give a digital tool certification test called IC3 uh, Spark. Um, it is a digital tool certification where the students can earn, you know, a little a little certification that they um, are a better digital citizen. So here's a course that, like I said, here's our course trailer that we've got going on. Just to engage our students, they can click here to view their active investigations and go view a case file. Um, and all of these cases that we created, and we knew the stuff that they needed to learn in order to pass the test. Some of it, you know, case one, they learn operating systems. They learn some hardware, some software. Um, they learn a little bit about Word, PowerPoint, Excel. I'm going to click on a random case file and see if this is a... Yeah, here's one where they get their little detective junior badge um, another one of these cases is a cold case yeah. this is a cold case case of the disappearing man <laughs> 
Um, and they learn right from the beginning, what is a cold case? Um, and then there's a lot of reading skills in this as well, but it's an engaging, exciting, irresistible theme where, you know, it's presented as if it were a mystery case and they have to read through this case file and, and investigate and, and learn along the way. And that really is getting some really great um, pass rates, but it's also really getting this learning into our schools um, and getting these kids excited about it. So it's kind of a an adventure. Do they want to time travel back in time or do they want to bring a detective up to 2017? Um, so that's just one of our examples. I'm going to show you just one more. Uh, case file number four. As you can see on the back end here, I, I was clicking through from the student view before where they were just clicking on the case files, but back here, um, we have it built out like you would see in the normal modules of the Canvas course, but we definitely pride ourselves on that organization, but our students never go to that part of it. Um, so here's a, you know, a look at when you click into one of the case files. Um, they're going to help one of our local business processors partners because they got hacked and we want <laughs> we want our students to help them because we know our students can figure out the puzzles so they kind of help out our local business partners and communities not for real but they think it's for real um, while they're doing these curriculums along the way so here's one of, um, of those things so the hacker has brought this to them <laughs> so there's a look at that so a couple flows up here um, in order to get that irresistible curriculum. Um, one is design. And like I said, um, say hello to Alphabot, right? Alphabot is our um, friendly computer science mascot that we've put in all of our elementary computer science. He turns into Betabot in high school and Gammabot in, uh, in high school, Betabot in, in middle, excuse me. Um, but he's our, our computer science friend that helps our students through. But think about how that design, that theme, really engages the students. Um, I talked about the case files. I talked about the alphabet and the, the theme, the color themes. But also, you know, in first grade computer science, we have this theme running throughout the whole thing where alphabet was in the summer. He was using um, his powers to help out at a zoo. And he was the bot and bo robot uh, keeper at the zoo. And then he was helping our students learn computer science on day one of first grade. And all the zoo animals got out. Oh no, oh my gosh. So Alphabet has to go and lesson by lesson, he goes and hopefully if the students do a great job, they get to find another animal and they uncover Daisy the duck and they Lucky the lion and Sammy the skunk and all sorts of other animals that were at the zoo. Um, so that really keeps our first graders engaged and our, our teachers have done some great things on uh, bulletin boards where they have their computer science coding zoo and things like that. So just think about a way, whatever it is, to get those students wanting more, to get them engaged. And keep that learning unpredictable. Um, and this gets underestimated sometimes. I know it's easier for us to come up with routines and procedures a lot in the classroom, but keeping learning unpredictable for students is really something that even us as adults, it's something that we crave. We really want to be surprised and engaged and excited for what's coming next. And keeping learning unpredictable is one of those things. I'm gonna let you in on a secret, and I let my, my uh, participants in on this the other day, but I'm gonna let you in on it too. If you're not excited about what you're building and engaged with the curriculum and content that you're delivering, your audience won't be either. The students won't be, the adults won't be, if you're teaching PD, if you're an administrator, or if you're another teacher, they're not gonna be either. And irresistible, unpredictable curriculum is the key to getting them engaged. And you know how you know you hit the nail on the head with irresistible curriculum that is unpredictable, is when you're building, and you've planned, and you're creating in Canvas, and you're using your blank Canvas to really create something exciting, and you want to share what you've just done with someone else. Hit the nail on the head. Because you maybe smile at yourself or you laugh at whatever you just created. Or, you know, I was creating a, a way to share um, 
it's a digital citizenship concept about digital literacy and whether or not websites are real or not. If you haven't gone to the DHMO website, or if you have, then you know what I'm talking about. DHMO um, is a website that's been created for this purpose. And I've created this great way to present it, and I had to figure out a way to create it blended. It was easy because the teachers could, at the end of it, um, after looking at the website and figuring out that DHMO is toxic and it creates all these deaths and it's really awful and, and it's everywhere, and you're like, how do you not know about this? Then you can go in and say, hey guys, guess what? It's water. <laughs> but it wasn't as easy to create that digitally, so I had to figure out a way in order to get that concept across um, to students. So I created a little video in order to get the students thinking like, oh my gosh, is that this is true and, and what am I going to do and how do we stay away from this thing? And I created this little video and I was so excited to show somebody and I'm like, that's when you know you've done it. That's when you know you've created something unpredictable that you didn't know some warning signs and some flashing lights and some breaking news about DHMO, which is water. If you haven't investigated it, I would recommend it. So I'm going to leave you with this quote. If you don't think you're a creator, I want you to change your mindset on that. You are. Um, you are a creator. You are a designer. If you are working in Canvas, you are an artist. And this is a quote from one of our most famous artists um, of all time. And he saw an angel in the marble, and he carved until I set him free. And it just gives you that inspiration that you need to start with that blank canvas and get it to be something really exciting, engaging, unpredictable, um, that your audience, your students are really going to love you for. And that doesn't happen in your comfort zone. That happens outside of your comfort zone. So be inspired, take a step out of that comfort zone. And I hope that you have gained something from this webinar. And I am happy to answer any questions that you have for me. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nicolina. Thank that you. was great. Um, let's um, open it up for questions. I am looking at the uh, chat. There doesn't seem to be any questions that are coming in right now. Um, as you know, you can always add your questions to the um, session events page. I'll put that link here too. Um, and you can reach out to Nicolina uh, either fear the email and the contact information that she shared or in the community where she'll be there as well. Uh, if there are no more questions, I just wanted to extend another thanks uh, to our presenter. Thank you so much for being here and sharing all your insights. Um, we really appreciate the, the feedback and the uh, experiences that you, you share to help kind of move the, the, the learning and um, initiatives forward for K-5. And we also wanted to say thanks to our uh, participants and our viewers. Thank you for being here. I know it's a Friday um, the, before the weekend, but uh, again, hopefully you will you will gotten something out of the session as well. All right. Well, enjoy the weekend, everybody. Nicolina, have a wonderful day, and uh, we will hopefully see everybody in another future Canvas Live session. Thank you very much. <laughs>